Hello, my name is Ian McCall. We're going to have a little look tonight at uh, the histopathology of nevi. Now, it's important to understand what nevi look like histopathologically so that you can understand melanoma. Let's have a little look at some of these uh, images clinically, first of all. Here's someone's back. There's a variety of different nevi here. You can see different sizes, different color. Now, some nevi arise from simple lentigos. And lentigos are non-sun influenced pigmented, flat pigmented lesions in the skin. And your uh, junctional nevi can be flat as well. Your compound nevi are usually raised and your dermal nevi are certainly raised. So your congenital nevi. We're also going to talk about blue nevi and uh, combined nevi. Let's have a little look, first of all, at a benign junctional nevus. Oh, when it says junctional, it means the activity is at the dermoepidermal junction. And you can see here the little nests of cells, mainly on the reti ridges. These are the dermal papillae up here. These are the reti ridges. And most of your nests of cells are at the base or along the sides of the reti ridges. You may get slight increase in melanocytes in between here. And if we look a little bit closer, here again you see some single cells here and nests confined to the reti ridges. There's nothing much in the dermis here. Um, these are some vessels and there may be just a few scattered lymphocytes. This is collagen here. Um, the looks as if there's a little bit of melanin, perhaps some melanophages here as well. That can happen, the melanin drops down, but there's no cells down in this area. All the cellular activity is, is confined to the dermoepidermal junction, and that's the feature of a junctional nevus. Look at this one now. It's raised, it's thickened, um, has somewhat of an appearance of a congenital nevus, but uh, this has only been there for a few years. You can see dermatoscopically that it's primarily made up of uh, of clods and it's all of one color. So a nice benign looking picture. And if you look at that histologically, what do you start to see? You start to see clumps of cells in the dermis, in the upper papillary dermis. These are all the clumps of cells here. There may be a bit of activity at the dermopidermal junction, because if we're saying it's a compound nevus, we usually mean that there's little bits of junctional activity, but there's also larger clumps of cells, benign nevus cells, confined to the papillary dermis. This is your collagen here in the reticular dermis. Looks like this one's been shaved. There's nice orthokeratosis there on the, on the surface. And if we look at this a little bit more carefully, he was saying you see a few melanocytes on the reti ridges, part of that junctional activity, but most of your nevus cells are down here in the uh, papillary dermis. And there are nests of them like this. Sometimes nevus cells are described as type A, type B, and type C. Type A nevus cells have an appearance somewhat like the epidermis. They're more epithelioid. Type B nevus cells are more lymphocytic-like. In other words, there's a lot more nucleus than there is cytoplasm. And you could say these look like type B. Whereas type C nevus cells are the more spindle-shaped cells. And we'll show these later on. And they tend to be seen deeper in the deep papillary or reticular dermis. And these spindle-type nevus cells are more typically seen in blue nevi. So this is a compound nevus where you've got nests of cells in the papillary dermis and also some increased uh, cells at the dermoepidermal junction. Note that uh, in a benign nevus, the cells don't really show much in the way of mitosis, and um, in a nevus there's usually maturation of cells with depth. Um, sometimes the more atypical cells can be more near the surface here, but the cells at the base look much more like conventional benign nevus cells. This is different, of course, in melanomas, where you don't get that maturation and depth, and you may well get mitosis. 
So you always have to show a pathologist the base of a lesion. It's important they get a chance to have a good look at that to make their diagnosis. So that's a compound nevus. Then you come to these nevi here, and these are dermal nevi. They often become more protuberant, more prominent as people get older, and some, some families just have a characteristic of having these types of, uh, of nevi. And if you look at these, you can see there's a lot more nevus cells, nevus cells extending all the way down into the uh, dermis here, and well into the dermis. And if you actually have a close look, and we'll show you this in a minute, there aren't any nevus cells at the dermoepidermal junction. Here we go. Nothing really at the dermoepidermal junction at all. But to here you've got nests of bland nevus cells confined to the dermis. And there's dispersion of these cells as you come down. You know, you've got nests here and then they disperse away as to single cells as you come down into the depth of the lesion. And this again is in contradistinction to a melanoma, where you tend to have um, a lack of this and perhaps a real band of cells, you know, a real edge um, of cells coming down into the uh, dermis with mitosis. You won't get mitosis here, and the cells here are quite bland um, at the base. So this is a dermal nevus where most of the cells are confined to papillary and reticular dermis. There's nothing much at the dermoepidermal junction. So we've talked about junctional, compound, and dermal. Junctional, single nests of cells along the sides and bases of the, of the reti ridges. Compound, some cells at the dermoepidermal junction and nests in the papillary dermis. And dermal, large nests of cells extending deep down into the uh, dermis. Let's have a look at some others. This is a typical blue nevus. Um, can be seen in any age group, usually a bluey black color because the presence of the nevus cell is deep in the reticular dermis. There's no network to be seen in the dermatoscope. It's blue structureless um, when you look at it. There are other variants of um, a blue nevus. Here's another one here, where you've got blue-gray structures here, but again, virtually structureless. There's the lesion here, pigmented lesion on the on the temple. Your differential is that it's a, a metastatic melanoma, and uh, sometimes, depending on the history, you uh, can't see any other features that allow you to differentiate those two, and you do have to do a biopsy. And then there's the cellular blue nevus, um, often seen in younger people in the scalp, and uh, it tends to have a bluey gray color associated uh, with it. Note the dyed hair here. That's the dye in the hair and the new hair, not with the dye. But you look at it uh, with the dermatoscope, and you get a mixture of blue and gray colors. And if you were to look carefully at the vessels here, you'd probably see that the vessels curved. And that's a feature often, or we've said comma vessels there, but really curved vessels. Curved is the best way of describing them. And that's a feature often of um, uh, this cellular type blue nevus as it is of um, other uh, compound nevi. Now what about the histology? We'll need to show you this in higher power in a minute, but there are no nevus cells in the superficial dermis here. Um, or at the dermoepidermal junction, and you've got large, um, thick cellular collection of cells deep in the reticular dermis here, almost extending down and around the um, fat lobules down here. And if you go up and look more closely, you can see there's nothing really at the dermoepidermal junction here. Here's your collagen, and here you've got these um, fascicles of cells, spindle-shaped cells, cords of them, um, in between the uh, collagen bundles. And it's these uh, spindle-shaped cells, uh, often with some melanin in them as well. Some of the uh, color you're seeing down there is melanin, um, melanin, melanin, melanin here. And this helps to give it the blue-black color that you see 
in um, these types of cellular blue nevi. And this is another one here, deeper down. Um, here you can see uh, a lot more, in fact, of melanin uh, among the spindle cells here, pigment between the collagen bundles. And you've got this pink collagen in the deep dermis. There's something a reaction between the cells and the surrounding collagen, um, giving you this thicker pink collagen. So this is a deep cellular blue nevus. Now, sometimes you can get a combined nevus. Look at this one here, and there's an area of pigmentation at one edge, um, this eccentric hyperpigmented area. If you look at it with the dermatoscope, you've got this area of structureless um, bluey uh, gray area. You have some globules um, or clods in here, and looks like there may even be some small milia here. Um, yep, milia cysts, I've said. And you've got some comma or uh, vessels curved here. So this you usually see in a um, dermal nevus. Um, but this you'd usually see in a blue nevus. And uh, when you have a look at these histologically, they're part of the features of a combined nevus. And with a combined nevus, here you can see increased junctional activity of melanocytes. Here and here, single melanocytes here, some little nests here, single nests here. But deep within it, you've got these spindle-shaped cells in the dermis, along with um, a lot of uh, melanin that may be in melanophages, or may be in these spindle cells as well. Um, and this is the picture. Remember these spindle cells in the deeper dermis? This is the picture of your blue nevus. This is a picture here of a junctional nevus. So you've got a combined junctional and blue nevus here. I think we may have a closer view here. Yeah, again, some nevus cells at the dermo-epidermal junction. Not much in the way of nesting here, though. But melanin and melanophages and um, you've got some spindle cells here in amongst the collagen and these are the features of a blue nevus um, and the combination of course um, are the features of a combined nevus. Here you've got a congenital nevus and often within a congenital nevus you'll have some raised um, areas so a uh, compound nevus within the congenital nevus itself. We've said present from birth, but not all congenital nevi are present at birth. Some can actually arise later. And generally with the dermatoscope, um, you get uniformly packed brown clods, but you may have some features of a compound nevus within it. Here's another large congenital nevus. You're seeing two populations of cells here as well. And if you look at a congenital nevus with the microscope, then often it has that papillated surface. Um, and this is what you see in the surface of the uh, nevus. And we'll look at this more in a close-up, but you may see some little milium cysts as well. And of course, because it's thicker and it's equivalent to a compound nevus, you've got dense uh, nevus cells filling the dermis and extending down deeper. But the cells disperse at the base um, here's a hair follicle uh, within the lesion, and often, of course, with congenital nevi, you will have hairs growing out of them, but you also have that with dermal nevi. But again, sharply circumscribed, and most um, benign nevi are sharply circumscribed, which is another feature in um, contradistinction to melanoma. And if we look at a higher powered view, Again, you can see not much happening at the dermo-epidermal junction, almost a, a little clear zone of, uh, in the dermis there, and then these large nests of cells filling both the um, papillary and the reticular dermis. Um, some melanin granules here in the lesion, and this is a milium cyst here. There we go. There's a milium-like cyst here layered collagen within it, 
Look at these nests, well-defined nests, benign-looking nevus cells in the papillary dermis of this congenital nevus, and not a lot happening along the dermoepidermal junction. And they're uniform, round nevus cells. So these would be the type B nevus cells that, uh, that we'd see and we were talking about. So, this is the feature of a congenital nevus, the nine lesion. Often with a congenital nevus, there's extension of the nevus cells um, around the lesion, uh, around hair follicles, and sometimes even into rector uh, pili muscles as well. So, these are the various histological features. We've gone through junctional, compound, and dermal nevi. We looked at the combined nevus, we looked at the blue nevus, and we've looked at congenital nevus. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little sojourn through benign nevi. Thank you.